Hey guys, so I've actually uh, decided to wait until all my training jobs are finished. And as you can see, it took quite, a, quite some time. It started mine around uh, midnight and it ended at, uh, the first one started at 5.25 a.m. So it's, it's probably like seven hours. And see, that's, that's one of the reasons I decided to use only 15 epochs because you'll see uh, by only using 15 epochs, we're not going to get the best results. So I'm happy if we find a classifier that has a validation accuracy above uh, 80%. But just know that if you want to train this for an enterprise level project, you want to have those epochs bumped up to at least uh, 50. And remember, you can just come over here and change the epochs here to 50 because 15 is, is very low and it's not going to give us... Uh, such good results, but I still wanted to uh, show you guys uh, how we can uh, train in, in multiple jobs. See, we did five jobs and we have the five training jobs. And the reason you see that these come after each other is because we set the max parallel jobs to one, which means that no two training jobs started at the same time. So these are uh, synchronous. So once this is finished, this one can begin. And what I want to show you guys is First, let's go into the first training job and we can see the metrics and how it improved and everything. Uh, as you can see here, this is the beginning. It's uh, doing some configuration, some initialization. It's using, uh, for the number of layers, 152, which means it's using the ResNet 152 architecture. It's doing the 15 epochs, obviously not good for an enterprise project, but it still uh, yields us some, some good results without us having to pay uh, too much for our instances because if we did like 50 epochs like I recommended we'd be paying a lot more uh, for the ml.p2 extra large instance which has a GPU here it decided to use this learning rate obviously you see the augmentation we have the early stopping parameters and here we have the first epoch it starts at zero and as you can see uh, here's a time the validation accuracy so that's actually a pretty good uh, I didn't expect any of our models to have a validation accuracy above uh, 80% um, for using only 15 epochs, so this is a pleasant surprise. Um, as you can see, we can scroll through the uh, logs and saving the best model. And this is interesting. Look uh, here uh, at uh, epoch 10, it's changing the learning rate. Now, why is it changing the learning rate? Remember how we specified here that after epoch 8, 10, and 12, it should decrease the learning rate by 0.1 in order for it to find the best uh, global minima. So we can see that it's, it's uh, working. And as you can see, we have a, a model with the validation accuracy of 84% at only epoch 12. And we're finishing it at epoch 15. You know, it, we started at 0, that's why this is 15. Uh, so that's just another reason to show you guys that why 15 epochs isn't enough because at epoch 12 it has a new best model which means it's still improving and it's still uh, the validation accuracy is increasing so that's why you would want to train for, uh, for a longer period of time. As you can see uh, we did not have any early stopping it went the length of all the 15 epochs so let's let's look at another training job to see if we had any that uh, had Oh, for example, this one, see, we're only at epoch 14 and the early stopping criteria has been met. So we can see that the early stopping is working as well, um, which is awesome. And so here's the thing, how, how would you uh, pick out the best model? Because here we don't want to look at every single validation accuracy from the logs and, and compare them. Well, actually, you can do two things. You can uh, go to metric, uh, not metric filters, you can actually... Uh, search the log group and you can search something like validation accuracy and then these logs will contain only things with validation accuracies uh, but this is still very tedious uh, you can by the way create patterns to look for in your logs and then you can uh, create a metric filter for it see this is the pattern right now our pattern is validation accuracy it's looking for those word uh, those words uh, and you can save this uh, filter um, and then the next time you have a training job you can just use this uh, filter to search for the results but I'm actually going to show you something even better so I'm at my management console and I'm going to type in SageMaker and I'm going to Amazon SageMaker 
and here you want to go to training hyperparameter tuning jobs and I'm gonna have a bunch uh, as you can see don't worry about these uh, this is the one I did with uh, you guys as you can see that's the most recent and it took uh, seven hours as you can see we have five out of five uh, complete uh, this one failed because I canceled it as you can see only ran for 27 minutes and if you go into this uh, you see you have completed five uh, training jobs, zero failed. Here we have all the training jobs. And actually, uh, you can just click on the best training job. And voila, you get the best training job hyperparameters. You get uh, these hyperparameters. And so what I would use in this case, if I wanted to have the best possible model, is create a new uh, training job with these hyperparameters. So I would set the uh, the learning rate to 0 0.02. I would set the mini batch size to 32. Uh, I would use the atom optimizer, and and I would just go on and continue with this. And actually, uh, what was our validation accuracy for this one? Uh, it was 85%. So I'm actually really pleasantly surprised after only running it for 15 epochs, we've achieved 85% on our validation. Uh, set and remember we had over a thousand pictures so so it correctly classified 85 percent of them that's very uh surprising at only 15 epochs so that just shows you how powerful uh transfer learning is without transfer learning if we'd only run it for 15 epochs we'd probably have somewhere around like 60 percent uh but still if we ran it for more this could easily be uh over 90 percent and what i want to show you guys one more thing is if you go into S3, remember we specified how we want to uh, save our models. Um, so I'm at the medical AI chest x-ray and the models and we have image model and here we have the uh, five models and what you want to do is uh, in the next video when we uh, load our model into our SageMaker notebooks and do some evaluation, uh, we're gonna get the best uh, model. We just have to go back to the uh, hyperparameter tuning job page and get the name of the best model and then we can load that model in. And so we'll be doing that in the next video and we're gonna evaluate our model. Like I said, we're gonna do uh, confusion matrix. We're gonna calculate F1 score, recall and, and precision. So stay tuned for that.